In this tutorial, I'll show you how a free application called Power Toys can increase your digital art and design productivity. Microsoft Power Toys is a free application that integrates with Windows 10 to offer several features that streamline repetitive tasks. And in my opinion, these tools can benefit artists and designers. Sampling a color from your screen can be a chore. In order to capture a color from a reference image or a design found on the internet, you usually need to save the image to your computer open it in an application like Photoshop, then sample the color and inspect its properties. If you want to copy the hex value for use in another application, that adds a few more clicks and copy and paste shortcuts. Power Toys really streamlines color sampling with a universal color picker that works in any application running on Windows. You can preview a color by hovering over it, sample a color from on screen, save multiple colors in a list, and inspect the color values. The color picker even generates shades of lighter and darker colors, which you can add to your palette. The color picker stays on screen on top of other windows and can be moved to another display if you like. There are options to control the default behavior of the color picker, and you can have it automatically copy the hex, HSB, or other values to the clipboard when a color is sampled. If you're coming from a traditional painting background and you just want to see the name of the color, you can enable that as well. And you can even have options to display the color values in HSL, HSV, HSI, HSB, and other formats. This can be very helpful if you're trying to match an exact color in your artwork to one from a reference image. I can search for a reference image, and without even downloading it, I can get a palette of colors from it. Getting that palette into your art application is as easy as capturing your screen with Windows Shift S, and then importing it into your application. You can then sample from it just like a palette. If you don't want to remember a bunch of shortcuts, you can program the color picker and screen capture shortcuts to a button on a stream deck. Did somebody say button? The next power toy that we'll explore is Fancy Zones. Fancy Zones makes multitasking and managing multiple windows a snap. Literally, you can snap applications and windows to specific zones on your desktop. For example, if I like my music player to always be in the top right, in this exact shape on this exact display, Fancy Zones can make it happen. Without Fancy Zones, I have to move this application and resize it every time I start up my computer. Another way I use Fancy Zones is to manage the content on my multiple displays. For instance, my Cintiq needs to be upright a lot of the time, so it blocks my view of the other two displays. I can define a few Fancy Zones on those displays and easily snap windows to the areas of those displays that are not obstructed by the Cintiq. Each display can have multiple zones, so I can easily place several reference images side by side without having to resize each window manually. This might not sound like a very fancy feature, but it will save you hours of time in the long run by eliminating some of the time it takes to arrange things on your desktop. Moving on to File Explorer, this one could be useful for artists and designers who create vector art. This power toy will allow you to view thumbnails of SVG files in the File Explorer. Normally you'd be able to see thumbnails for JPEG and PNG, but not for SVG files. You'll need to be in administrator mode to enable SVG previews. You can do that from the general tab. A restart may be required for it to take effect. If this isn't a tool you'd use, you can disable it, and that goes for any of these power toys. Image resizer is one that I use a lot. I can't tell you how many hours I've wasted doing this repetitive task. Let's say you have artwork that is too large to post to a website. Or maybe you just want to make a smaller copy so people can't download your high-resolution version. Normally, you'd have to open the images in Photoshop and use a batch process to resize the images. This is pretty efficient if you're processing a lot of images, but if you just have one image, not so much. It's a lot of clicks and keystrokes. With Image Resizer, I can add resize options into my right-click menu. I just right-click on an image, select Resize Pictures, and then I can choose from several preset sizes and select a few other behaviors. Once I click Resize, the image is automatically processed. I can use the Image Resizer options to define custom sizes, specify the default image format and quality, and choose a naming convention. Keyboard Manager will allow you to remap keys or keyboard shortcuts. For example, there might be a really complicated keyboard shortcut like Control-Shift-H that you want to simplify to just H. You can even choose for the keyboard remapping to apply to all applications or just specific ones. If I go to Corel Painter, make a selection and then press H, I can hide the selection edges, which normally requires me to press Control Shift H. 
You have to be careful when setting these because they will override other shortcuts. If things get messed up, you can always disable Keyboard Manager or delete the remapped keys. I find that my Stream Deck works better for remapping shortcuts to a button, so I don't use Keyboard Manager, but it might come in handy for you. Power Rename makes renaming a lot of files much easier. There are a lot of ways to use this one. First, let's say that I have a bunch of artwork files that I titled, but now want to change. This happens to me a lot because sometimes I don't know what the title of the painting will be until it's finished. Because I save so many iterations, it's just not worth it to manually change each file name to the final title. Ultimately, this makes it more difficult to find a specific piece of artwork because the title, the folder name, and the file names are all different. I've wasted a lot of hours trying to find a specific painting only because I didn't recognize the file name. Now I can easily rename my files to make them easier to identify without much effort at all. You can also use Power Rename to add and remove text from file names. For example, I can duplicate a few of these images and then remove the space, hyphen, and copy from the file names. The last tool that we'll look at is Power Toys Run. This can be used to run applications, search for files, browse the web, and toggle to running applications without having to launch anything special or navigate away from what you're doing. You just press the shortcut Alt plus space and type in what you want. If I want to run Photoshop, I can do that. If I want to search for a specific art or design file, that's available from the same search bar. Beneath that is one more tool called Shortcut Guide. It's just a guide to the Windows key shortcuts, so feel free to check that out if it interests you. Power Toys is really cool and has made a significant impact on my day-to-day -day workflows. Streamlining repetitive tasks allows me to spend more time focusing on being creative and helps to boost my morale when working on complex projects with a lot of busy work. Power Toys may eventually be integrated into a future version of Windows, but for now it's easy enough to install into your current version. I'll put a link to Power Toys down in the description of this video. Leave a comment and let us know how you use Power Toys to streamline your workflow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.